So, hello, uh, my name is David Lormer and this is my good friend Evan Thompson and today we are going to be discussing what we both think would be the ultimate rugby team or the best uh, the best 15 of the best team mm-hmm. of the past decade. So, uh, we've both picked our teams, yep. we have both looked into it quite a lot and we both think we've picked the, the best team ourselves. So, would you like to go through yours first and then I'll go through mine after. So, for the front row, we've got... Kane Healy, Kevin Milamu, Owen Franks, Even Elizabeth, mm-hmm. Sam Whitelock. Then moving to the flankers, you've got David Pocock, Richie McCall, and as the eight, Gregory Aldrit. Number nine, upcoming talent, Antoine Dupont. <sighs> Number ten, arguably. Oh my God. The best 10 there's ever oh, yeah, been. No, that's, that's that, Dan yeah, Carter. That's, yeah, that's far off. Then you've got your blind side wing and Brian Habana. Okay. Centres, Man Onu and Brian O'Driscoll. Open side wing, Cheslin Kobe. And it could be argued George North in there as well. Uh, yeah, as I've, a, I put up. George North in there myself, but uh, yes. And then as fullback, Ben Smith. Okay, no, that's, okay. A, that's a pretty solid team. I like that so far. Uh... Personally, for me, my team goes uh, number one, the beast himself, Tendai Motawara, just uh, on parallel. Like yeah. number two, I've went for Rory Best. I think that he's a very overlooked player for the for the best deck, uh, for the best team of the deck. And I feel like he had a lot bit more. To, there, a wee bit biased, but a wee lot a lot more to offer. Number three, Tag Furlong. Yeah. You don't get the you don't get the nickname the Wexford Bull for yeah, for nothing like so. Enough. Happy enough about that. Number four, Brody Retallick. Best for me, he's been the most consistent and the best uh the best lock just ever period. Like there's mm-hmm. no one no one better on him. Apart yeah. from Alan Jones, who is a close, yeah. close second in my opinion. But he's definitely up there. But I definitely have uh Ibn Atzabeth there mm-hmm. as a definite uh contender there. Just number six, Michael Hooper. Man's just man's a menace. Like he's, he's just, overlooked. He's very overlooked yeah. and I decided to put him in because He's all for putting his body in the line. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes a dirty player, all the yellow cards yeah. he gets, like, but that just shows his intensity. Bit of a hot head. A bit of a hot yeah. head, but you need that sometimes. Arguably one of the goats of rugby, Richie McCall's number mm-hmm. seven. Like, honestly, just he's oh, such a player. Like, you can't. Yeah. It, it need, you don't even need words to describe him. Like, he's just a goat. Uh, number eight, a very overlooked number eight, in my opinion, uh, yeah. Sergio Parise. I feel like. If he didn't play for Italy and he played for a bigger team, I reckon he that he, he would have, under yeah, his belt. He'd have so many more titles under his belt. But uh, just the fact that he's Italian sort of yeah doesn't help his case. We but number nine, mm-hmm. I went over for the past decade. I've went Conor mm-hmm. Murray. The man has been consistent. The man is just oh his passes are phenomenal. Don't get me wrong, Anton Dupont. Yep, could could very well overtake him. It's just all about gonna be about consistency. Mm-hmm. Aaron Smith, I have to say, I was honestly like, it was a very very close call because like, don't get me wrong, two thousand and sixteen and seventeen, Colin yeah. Murray, mm, it's hard to look past him like it really is. Mm-hmm. But Aaron Smith, a phenomenal player as well. So the goat of rugby, oh, Dan, Dan Carter himself. Now this man actually needs no introduction. Is phenomenal yeah. at playing. Like, like look at all those awards he's got there. Like that. That's a page. <laughs> Mental. A page. Next, we've got also, as you said, we've got Brian Habana. A phenomenal player. Like, wherever he went, he was just a phenomenal player. Got pace to burden. And his speed. Look up the video of him running against a cheetah on a, on a Boeing 747 jet. Have you ever seen that nope, video? I have not. It is phenomenal. Does he, does he beat them? Of course he does. He's a pacey guy. Like, he's flipping fast. Spoiler alert then. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Uh, number twelve, Man Anu. Yeah. That man's off foods and his intensity running like the uh one of the best games he ever played. The two thousand and fifteen World Cup final, mm. he was phenomenal. I mean, Sonny Bill. Oh, the dream Center. team! Like they were phenomenal. Arguably, yeah. another goat of rugby. Definitely mm-hmm. in the top three or top two contenders for the best ever. Like Brian O'Driscoll, what he did for the Ireland squad. Like mm-hmm. he even, changed the game. He actually did. Even he actually did. My yeah. my favorite highlight of him was the one where he's running and he cuts in and he chucks the ball. Yes. Over, he chucks the ball over his own player's Legendary. head and runs on, nearly scores. It's fun. It's just a phenomenal clip. Like it actually is. 
George North, I've put him as number 14. I'll stand mm. by that. I reckon Cheslin Colby, or Colby still has a bit to go. Mm. I think if he yeah. keeps on going the way he's going, he'll definitely be in there. But at the moment, I've got George North in. I know why you should so, have been there. Why? The clip of Israel Falloy. Oh, man, that's phenomenal. That's such a good... Oh, oh. it's such a good clip. He just... He mints me to him. Yeah. Flipping claws. And Ben Smith is number 15. The best... The best fullback ever. Like, mm-hmm. I did have a hard time either going to put... I was going to put the, the likes of Rob Carney in there. I feel yeah. like what he did for the Ireland squad, just... Oh, a great but, player. Like, and Israel Dagg as well. He was a, he mm. was a definite... Uh, a close second as well, so... But then you have to think of bias, or you? Yeah, I'd be, I'd be, uh, yeah. be done for bias. So we're gonna have a wee look into them now. We're mm-hmm. gonna have um, a discussion about why we think they deserve to be in the best, uh, yeah. best fifteen of the decade. And then we're gonna also look at some close seconds. So I reckon mm-hmm. we start from the number one position. Yeah. So let's crack on. So obviously I have Tendai Matara because. You don't get that nickname the beast for nothing. Like yeah. the size of him. He is six foot two inches and he's hundred and twenty kilos. Like you don't want him running at you. You really do not want him running at you. Like mm, it gives you nightmares. He actually he actually would. He is a very scary bloke. I still remember that clip of him uh running against the Samoan fifteen. Mm-hmm. Now this Samoan fifteen literally about five foot two, or no well five foot five foot four five foot five like he is a very very small individual gets him down like he tackled him and like mm-hmm. that, that's a big feat of strength nine times out of ten that doesn't happen he tramples him i yeah. oh it was uh, it's a hard one like it really is because he's just such an he's such a beast like you can't you can't teach that as well you actually can't you're just yeah. born with it like you actually are so my number one, yes. on the other hand, is Keane Healy. I respect that. I respect that. He's played on the Ireland team for so long, although he might not have won mm-hmm. the likes of the World Cups. Yep. He's built up that reputation mm-hmm. that has held his spot for so long in the Ireland team. Mm-hmm. And players look up to him, around him. Yeah, no, I, 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 back, I, I back that choice. It's a good choice and everything. And like, even as well, we're like, you're not coming on people as well. Mm-hmm. It's like... It's a, it's a pretty impressive feat to stay in that squad as long as yeah. he has, even with his age and everything as well. you so. have the likes of Conor Murray and Sexton yep. in the backs yep. to lead from experience. Yeah. Yep. Then you have Keane Healy. Yes, so I definitely... Because definite, uh, he definite probably had to take on the role after Rory Best. I was going to say, he definitely yeah. had to pick up that captaincy role after uh, after mm-hmm. big Rory left. But yeah. uh, no, he's a, very, he's a very good player, a very overlooked player in my opinion, but mm-hmm. yeah... Speaking of the man himself, the oh, arguably the most ah, uh, it's hard. Arguably the most notable man in Irish rugby history. Like mm-hmm. for me, anyway, I think it's either going to be Rory Best or Brian O'Driscoll or someone who's done bits mm-hmm. for the sport. Like, like the honours he's won there. He has got an OBE. He's won the Six Nations four times. He's Grand Slam winner two times. He's a pro twelve. He's a pro twelve winner once with Ulster, and that's pretty impressive. With yeah. Ulster, like, cause our squad has not been good so far. Like, uh, and he's also won the triple crown four times as well. Something else. Don't get me wrong. He hasn't won a World Cup, and I think, but for what he's done with the Ireland squad, like, mm-hmm. he's he's definitely cemented his name in history. Like, so I I do. That is why I've put him in there as well. And I know he's only five mm-hmm. foot eleven, like, but one hundred and five kilos. Like, the man is just, machine. The man is a wreck. He actually is. He's just mm. too good. Like. Looking at those Grand Slam wins, they're mm. almost ten years apart. Yeah, which shows you. Yeah, that he can, he can. He's always up. He can level. do it. Uh, for him. Yeah, he can do it at the consistency. Like obviously, mm-hmm. like the Ireland squad. Like although they won it in twenty fourteen and twenty fifteen as well, they didn't obviously do the Grand Slam. I'm pretty sure they got beat by by England in one of them. They won all the games. They got beat by England in one of them, and then I think it was France possibly in the other one. Mm-hmm. Possibly Wales. It was either France or Wales in the other one. But uh, yeah, he's a a very solid player. Like, and even as well, he's got two. Yeah, he's got two uh, lands tests under his belt now. Getting into the lands, yeah. like just the way, he just yeah, yeah. Today's but, sponsor. Uh, <laughs> today's sponsor, <laughs> Lions Rugby. But yeah. uh, to get into the lands test, like that's impressive stuff. Mm. Because like that is the best of the best of our British and Irish rugby. Like so, no. a very a very good player in my opinion. So that's why I've put him on my team. Obviously, I didn't go for. 
the Ulster yeah. boy. <laughs> the best. I, yeah, I went for Kevin Milamu. That's how you pronounce his name. Yeah, no, some of these names. I'm apologizing in advance if we butcher some of these yeah. names. I'm very sorry, but uh, yeah. uh, but again, like he's probably a bit taller than mm-hmm. Rory Best. Yeah. He's heading up there about six foot, six foot one. But he's for also for a hooker. That's that's quite tall for a hooker. Yeah, well, it's one one eighty centimeters. Oh, fair play. Yeah, man. but then weight as well. You said Rory was what hundred. 105 kilos, yeah. He's got that extra 6 kilogram gain. No way. Oh, mate. He's which is going to make all the difference oh, in the pack no. weight. But the reason why I chose it mm-hmm. was probably due to the more success he had. Although, okay, no, that's fair enough. Although like Rory that. did captain Ireland for that period of time. Yep. As you said, he didn't win a World Cup. Mm-hmm. This guy, from whenever I was growing up watching rugby... Did he, he was, win? How many he, did he win? Did he I, th- win? I think he won one. Was he in the 2015 squad? No. Even as a substitute? No. I think he, he was. Was he? Yeah. I think he's won two then, because don't forget they did the back, yeah, yeah. They did the back of the back. Oh, yeah. That I, is still, I that is still yeah. one of the... Oh, that New Zealand team there. That was a, oh, was yeah. a racket machine. Like, it was I'm, a scary I'm team. a bit biased towards New Zealand. New Zealand, so. okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I like that. I like that. So... Uh, moving on to number three, we've got, for me, we've got another Irish boy. We've got uh, the man himself, Tag Furlong. Now, his man is known as the Wexford Bull. And you do not get that nickname by mm-hmm. being soft or anything. Watch the clip of him. Absolutely obliterate Kieran Reid in the New Zealand Test Series in 2017. He minced him. Like, yeah. man, man bounced him. Like, you do not do that to Kieran Reid lightly. That's the only time I've ever seen Kieran Reid bounced, bar one other time in a Super Rugby match. But um, coming in at six foot, at six foot one, one hundred and nineteen kilos. Like that is a scary weight. And if you want him running at you, you are in for a yeah. fun time. Like you be a double team. <laughs> Imagine him and Rory tackling you. Like you'd, yeah. you'd be crushed. Not even tackling, running. Oh, it's if you're scary, the like, if you're the wee skinny fullback, yeah, no, he's I made think, a line break, yeah, f- and he's a pacey guy as well. Like yeah, there's clips of him pacing down the wing, like even as well, just the the honours he's won. He's a Pro 14 winner with Leinster. He's won that uh, four times with Leinster, and they're all back to back. They're all yeah. in, in one. I also won the European Champions Cup in 2018 with them as well. Mm-hmm. He got into the World Rugby Team of the Year. No, that's the yeah, actual that's, like that's World something. Rugby Association bit. And he's also a Grand Slam, uh, RBS Six Nations, and a Triple Crown winner all in 2018. So he's got a lot of he's got a lot of yeah. honors under his belt. They'll say that, especially getting in that World Team of the Year. Like that's mm-hmm. that's an impressive feat. And he's only 29, and he already has 119 cap for Leinster and 56 for Ireland. Yeah, he's came so, onto the scene from about yeah, 2017. Because yeah. I, I didn't really hear me, of him. Me neither, no. I obviously knew he played for he played for Leinster, like, but he was like in the substitutes around mm-hmm. there. He was starting the odd game and everything. But he really, after that after that set test series with New Zealand, like the autumn internationals, and everything, he really just came onto the scene. So, unlike Ty Furlong that you yep. chose... I went for Owen Franks again. Okay. New Zealand boss. New Zealand. Yep. But it's it's a success that he did have. Yeah. That's what I went for. Because yep. like we were just saying there, he's only came onto the scene mm-hmm. for long the last few years. Yeah. Well this guy's been doing it with New Consistency. Zealand. Consistency. Yeah. On international level. Yeah. Which is harder in my opinion to do club level. Oh well, well depends on what league you're playing in. Yeah. Obviously man. like yeah, obviously Furlong's playing and like teams like Treviso and Zebra like and there's mm-hmm. yeah, so I, I respect that for enough. Fair enough. But uh so number four, Brody Retallic. A very overlooked player in my mm-hmm. opinion. He's only thirty, so he's still got a good few years left. I reckon he'll play about 30, 33, 34 at a push. Yeah. Definitely to thirty two, like definitely at least I'd like to think so. Uh six foot eight. Something else. 124 kilos. He should be in the NBA. Man has a good his- Man has a good like a good history of being a second row like. But if he ever wants to move over to America, I'm sure the Bulls will take him up. Yeah. So he's got 110 club cups. He's got 92 caps for New Zealand, and these 
oh, these, these honours, like, the Bledisloe Cup won that at least, I think that's like nine times, won the Tri-Nations Cup at least nine times as well. Something else. He also got into the World uh, World Team of the Year, and he also got into the World Player of the Year in 2014. So, like, he's got a beef. On top of- he also won a... He also won the World Cup 2015. Yeah. He's got a beefed up resume. Like I'll say that. He's got a mm-hmm. very good resume. So, and then... Oh, you're mad. I yeah. Oh, so, so similar in stature. Oh. I went for Eben Etzebeth. I don't like him. No. You've went for the New Zealand bias this yeah. time. I've went for South Africa. Yeah. This guy is an absolute beast. Yeah. on On and off the field, probably. Like... 122 kilograms over two meters in height wait so what's that that's like well if he's if he's 204 so he's about six i'd say it's about six six do the same height if he's two three oh yeah i'd say i'd say it's about six eight. that's scary oh, that's so imagine scary. them two coming up against oh. each other because he was what so he's got the better physical yeah stats yep. than him but just by a tiny bit yeah Again, this guy has he made he made uh, South African national team and Toulon in the top fourteen in France. So he plays for them, doesn't he? Yeah, Toulon and France like and Toulon or Toulon are coming back as a good team. Yeah. They were the best team in the world for a stage and then sort of dropped off, but mm. coming back into their stance now, like so. But uh, no, I respect that yeah. opinion. He's a very good player. Uh, number five for me, Alman Jones. Pretty solid yeah. pick, like yeah. just those honours he's won. OBE Six Nations player of the tournament in twenty nineteen, Triple Crown winner four times, Grand Slam winner three times. La- he's got twelve British and Iron Lands Cup. Like that's that's four tests. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. Like, and he's got two hundred and forty eight club cups and one hundred and fifty international cups because he recently had his one hundred and fiftieth a few mm-hmm. weeks ago. So is he still going? I think he's still going. He's he's had a lot of shoulder trouble. Mm-hmm. But I hope he I hope he continues playing like because he's a he's a cracking player like he how, really is. How long do you think he's got left in him? I'd give him another I'd give him another year after yeah. that. I don't think. Yeah, def, I think he's retired from club rugby, hasn't he? I think he has. I think he might from the Ospreys. But I reckon he'll play he'll play in this World Cup and then that'll be him done. Mm-hmm. That's what I think. I think he'll play next year and that'll be him done. I always get confused so, with Al Al Wynn. And Alwyn Jones, because there's, oh, yeah, no, there's a strange. There's a prop after yeah. that. It's good, who's uh, who? Good stuff, like so. Who have you? Uh, who have you chosen? I went for Sam Whitelock. Oh, the New Zealand bass is back. That's yeah. What we, well, we've both. So we love it. That's what we love to see. Yeah, we've both chosen New Zealand uh, locks. Yep. So, I mean, again, World Cup winning team. Yeah. No, him and him and Whitelock. Uh, him and yeah. or Whitelock and Ritalik, like they were they were a scary scary duo to go up against like they really were I mean he's also captain New Zealand as well although it might not oh yeah I forgot he's a captain now yeah. after your man Reed. Mm-hmm. Reed left he's got five cap or five cups got, yeah five well, cups too well, yeah, so, I mean again physical presence oh yeah no he's a beast like he, uh, how, how tall is he he's two two so oh, he's like of course he is of course he is six he's seven menacing probably. But saying that, see if you're big. Sometimes that can come as a disadvantage. Yeah, I'm glad you've mentioned that because like, you'd be easier to grab onto the bottom mm-hmm. of like you'd be like the wee yeah. top tackles or the wee ankle ankle grabs like they'd mm-hmm. be very very dangerous like it'd mm-hmm. be very easy to take down. So, I mean, talking about height, yeah, you're next. Talking about height. We've we've dipped down. We've went a wee bit lower. We've come back to the normal size of humans that that are supposed to be like six foot, one hundred and eighty two centimeters, one hundred and one kilos. The man himself, Michael Hooper. Now this man, he is known as the bad boy in rugby. Like, uh, pretty sure he still holds the record for the most yellow cards in a in a season. Yeah. Most red cards as well. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes a dangerous player. But what he'll do for your squad, like he will put everything on the line Mm -hmm. for the squad and I'll back him 100% as my number six because he's a phenomenal tackler. His tackles are just different gravy. Yeah. 
115 international caps for Australia. And not a lot of honours. Mm-hmm. But I don't think... I don't think for somebody's my somebody of Michael Hooper's stature, like I don't think you need honours to back him up. I think what he's produced on the rugby pitch yeah. and what he's put in for a team, like I reckon that, that backs him up yeah. for me. So that's why I put him in as my number six. So who have you chosen? My number six is probably one of his teammates. Oh, a fellow Australian. Oh, interesting. I went for David Pocock. Okay. Okay. No, I I like that. I like that a lot. I respect that. That's a that's a, oh, that's really good. Oh, no, that's well, it. That's a conversation for another day. Who, who'd you rather have, Hooper or Pocock? That's a f- oh. I mean, he did primarily play yeah. open side. Yep. On on my Cooper here. Oh, that's a very good question to ask. Oh my god. So, do you want to change your mind? A little. I'm thinking. I'm I'm really thinking here. I'd rather have. Oh, no, I'll stick with my choice. I'd rather have Hooper, Hooper at, like, tackling-wise mm-hmm. and running-wise, but seeing defence, no one, even even as well with his ruck, his ruck yeah. ball. Like, you went in there alone and Pocock was on you. You are not getting out of that ruck alive, mm-hmm. like, with a ball. Like, no chance. But if, if you're a manager, think from a manager's point of view, mm-hmm. do they want someone who's more likely to get in a fight sent off? Or do you want someone, someone else reliable? Yeah. I'm very oh, two minded. I'm very two minded. Oh no. Oh dear. Uh, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to stick with Hooper. I can't do my boy like yeah. that. I can't do my man like that. I feel bad. No. Not at all. I'll have to back Hooper. He's just such a he's such a good player. He's such a dirty player, but he's so good. No. Right. I finally, we'll now, agree on. now we're into the big leagues. Now this is the the creme de la creme yeah. of rugby. Richie McCall himself. The man needs no introduction. Like he's just he's so unbelievably good. Oh, uh, obviously he's getting on the age, years now, like forty one. Mm-hmm. So obviously long retired. Six foot two, hundred and seven kilos. Like yeah, not a small guy. Like a very scary guy running at you. Like mm-hmm. one hundred and forty five caps for the Crusaders. Impressive, like on a hundred and forty-eight caps for New Zealand. I'm pretty sure he's one. He's either the most or one of the most capped New Zealand yeah. players in he's history. He's got more international caps than he does club. Yeah, and that's saying something. That's pretty impressive. Like, mm-hmm. so obviously he led back to back New Zealand uh, World Cup wins. Yep, and he got an order of New Zealand in 2012. So that's basically like the knighthood. Mm-hmm. We give him Britain, but only the New Zealand version. So, a pretty impressive guy. Like, yeah. just I do remember seeing a lot of these clips of him getting yeah. cheeky hits. Yeah, in the rocks, yeah. getting elbows, maybe punches. He took yeah. it. He moved on. Didn't take it out of them. Mm-hmm. Well, he did take it out of them. Yeah, in the tackles. Yeah, but unlike Hooper, who was your last one, oh. didn't get fired up. What is this Hooper? What is this Hooper bias? Like honestly, it's oh dear. Like he kept his calm because he was yep. a leader, mm-hmm. and obviously he needed to show by example. Yeah, yeah. Nah, no, he's a fantastic, fl- a fantastic player. Like, and even as well, it's what he did for tackling. Why he was the perfect all round player, in my point of view. He mm-hmm. could run with the ball. He could tackle. He could defend perfectly. He could get in those rocks. He wasn't afraid to get in there. Like so, even if. Off a scrum. Man. Oh yeah, so, even off a scrum as eight ball picks like oof. I remember that time he had to fill in eight one time. He had to fill in eight one time. Mm-hmm. I, I'm pretty sure it was in the in a it was only in a Crusaders match though. But mm-hmm. he he's a scary yeah. guy. Like I would not want him to play it. I'm glad he played seven for from an Ireland point of view, like. Number eight. a uh, controversial one, I think it's gonna yeah. be. I put Sergio Parise on. I feel like six foot five, hundred and thirteen kilos. He has 265 caps for Stade Francais in the top 14 division. 142 international caps. Like, what he did for the Italian team, don't get me wrong, Italian team, not great. Not a good team. Yeah. But he elevated them. He led by example. He was a good player. Like, don't get me wrong, he hasn't won a lot of... a lot of, like, honours and everything. Mm -hmm. But he he won the top 14 champion... Uh, championship with Stade Francais twice 
And he also won the Challenge Cup with Stade Francais once. Mm-hmm. Both of those, they're pretty, pretty good, pretty good honours. Like that's pretty impressive to win. Like so, but uh, would you say he's almost the turning point for Italy? I'd say that. Yeah, I'd say that when he came in, he elevated them, and when they came, when he came out, they sort of dropped back. They sort of dropped down. But don't get me wrong, they're moving back up now. Mm-hmm. Obviously, at, at Wales. Defeat. Oh no, that was a good yeah. win for Italy. Like that try was beautiful. Surprise that fullback's not on our list. Oh yeah, no, same like the the Italy agenda. Like nobody mm-hmm. nobody thinks of them. Because that was what their first win in what seven I think it was like seven years. Seven wins, like 30, 30, 36, 36 run on be- or beaten Th- yeah. yeah, I was And it was Scotland who they played yeah. last yep. time on beat. So, and it was pretty and to do it at home oh yeah I know to do it at, at home as well like thing. that's oh that's pretty impressive like so he's probably what's inspired yeah the yep. young ones but so who have uh, who have you I chosen mean, it was controversial between your pick Can't. but I went for an oh, upcoming right, player okay Gregory okay. Okay. Aldrit I mean he is the French captain okay. he's reliable if you mm. need he'll do all the dirty work yep if you kick the ball them off the restart, mm-hmm. he'll catch it. I'll just run at you. <laughs> yeah, he'll run at you. But then he'll get straight back up and yep. do the game for you. Okay. He's relentless. And even in the rocks, he'll jackal the ball, yep. turn it over, he'll keep his head. And if he makes a mistake, he'll just make up for it yep. by playing the same game he plays. And that's why... One of the reasons why France are so good at it. France are a very formidable team. Like it's it's gonna be very hard to look past them for mm-hmm. the for the World Cup. Honestly, I could very well see it I could very well see it being uh an England Ireland semi final mm-hmm. and a New Zealand France semi final. I reckon I don't think South Africa will go far this year. Why do you th- who do you think they'd get knocked out by all f- four of them if they came up against South Africa? Yeah, I, I see I see New Zealand beating South Africa. Mm-hmm. I see France beating South Africa. And I see us beating South Africa. I see I do very well see Ireland beating South Africa. The way we've been playing at the moment, I reckon if we control Colby mm-hmm. and put pressure in our kicking game... It's not even them. controlling them. It's matching their physical... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're, the South Africans are scary guys. Because like, you can match them all they want. Yeah. But if they just keep coming yeah. at you and at you, tiring yeah. you out, because they are made for this yep. like they have a front row yeah like they have two sets of front row that could play on any team yeah, yeah. just start not in, even reserve straight. start yeah and they just bring him on at what 30 minutes to go very formidable like sure I saw them do a wee tactic they started their bench front row for the f- first 30 minutes mm-hmm. then bring on their proper front row for the last 10 of the first half so they're warmed up for the second half ready to go oh it's a oh, good tactic is, like a very good tactic ridiculous. right so now I think the way we're going to do it now is we're going to we're going to do it in pairs now because okay. a 9 is good but with a 10 mm-hmm. even better That you need that chemistry there and then I think as well we're going to do two centres as well because yep. we'll have to play off each other Reckon we're gonna do the two wingers, mm-hmm. and then we'll finish it off with a nice fullback. Yeah. So my nine and ten, Connor Murray, for me controversial. Yeah. Speak with yeah. that there. Both of us have chosen Dan Carter. Yeah. Like without a doubt. Without a doubt, there there's no need for the the Wilkinson debate at oh, all. Yeah. At all. Whoever, Eng- England fans. Yes. Stop. Trash. Stop your bias. The yeah. only thing he did for you was kick a goal, the kick a drop yeah. goal, and ooh. which which Dan Carter's done exactly. The, against, exactly. Don't even at me about Dan Carter. It's phenomenal. I can't. We don't even have enough time to read out all those things. Let's just say he is the all-time Super Rugby leading point scorer and the all-time international leading point scorer, and that's not getting broken for a long time. He was also uh, the Player of the Year for two thousand and five, twelve, and fifteen. Like that says it all. It really does. Like. <laughs> What more do you need us to say? Like, apart from that, he is the goat. He's the goat of rugby. Mm-hmm. You don't see Johnny Wilkinson doing that. Now, back to the controversial. Yep. I said Conor Murray. I think that his consistency has proven that he is the best nine 
of the past decade. Don't get me wrong, mm-hmm. Garth Edwards, best nine mm-hmm. ever. Conor Murray, past decade, I'd back him. I'd back him mm-hmm. for what he's done. Again, not a lot of, not a lot of uh, honors, but from what he's done consistency wise, I reckon he's the the best nine of the decade. Like so, so my nine. Obviously, like another. The, I don't like the pump. No, it's he, Antoine Dupont. No, he put us out of the Champions Cup. I don't like the guy. He's a mug. I really no, don't like him. You can't. Oh, you can't do that. You can't just say I don't like him because he's think, too good. I think he's so inconsistent, though. I really do oh. because that game he played recently against that recent the most recent game against Ulster, he was dreadful that whole game until the seventy sixth minute where he like she got the ball dummied and ran over the line so are you trying to say he only shows up on the international stage yes I think for Toulouse don't get me wrong mm-hmm. on his day he's good but I think he only turns up for the international stage he must I think he must have had about three three handling errors mm-hmm. three or four knock-ons and then went into the very end scored a try and everyone said oh best player in the world best player. he's really not he's really not but he is what makes the French team tick yeah, I, honestly, I'd I'd back in the mark even I'd back in the mark. Would you? Even, yeah, I I I don't rate the pont. Don't get me wrong, he's had a cracking season, like, but yeah. I I do not rate the pont. Did he not get the uh, player he did, of the he year? Got player of the year, like I don't I don't know how I really don't know. Did how. did did uh, Murray have player of the year there? No, but Murray's more consistent. Okay. Don't get me wrong, like yeah, player of the year's class to bring that, or what do you call Boom Bart? Got player of the year while playing ten, but yeah. you don't see Dan, you don't see him backing up Dan Carter, like do you? I'm just gonna look up the age real quick of Antoine Dupont. The what real sorry? The the age of Dupont. Oh, he's like 20, 25. 25. 25. Oh, he is twenty five. So, I mean, he could get an injury. Mm-hmm. Which could just stop everything. Mm-hmm. But if, if he keeps going the way he's going, he's obviously going to build a wee bit more experience. Say, yeah. for example, this next World Cup yeah, coming up. Although Conor Murray might not might not start. Yeah. Because obviously they're trying to find new rules of leadership. Gibson Park. Yeah. I'm happy enough for him to take the ropes. I, I like him. I like him a lot. I think he's a crack on player. But, so. again, maybe DuPont's got two World Cups left in it. In him, yeah, maybe he can win one of those or two. Mm, I don't think he'll win two, he'll not. I think it's gonna be France have a good team now, mm-hmm. but they'll fall off four four years from now. They'll be back to where they were. I reckon they're like, uh, do you know who won the yeah. under 21s at all? The Six Nations? Ireland, Ireland, yeah, Ireland so, so Ireland. No, in saying that, it was only by a point, they only beat yeah. France by a point. But it is looking Ireland's way. Yeah, at the I'll back Ireland to do it. Like so. After that, we're gonna go into our two wingers now. So for my blindside winger, mm-hmm. chosen Brian Habana, which we you've done the same. We did. Just a few quick facts about him. We'll not go into too much detail. Yeah. If we pick the same players, like no point hearing it twice. But international rugby board player of the year, two thousand and seven. International rugby players association trial of the year, twenty twelve. Now. Not a lot, not a lot of honors, like, but the international rugby board player of the year, two thousand seven, mm-hmm. that's pretty impressive. And that was the year I'm pretty sure that he scored one of the best tries you'll ever see in your life from playing for the Bulls against the Stormers. Literally started off very end of the pitch, ran like up, just yep. cut them in two. It was like a hot knife through butter. It was beautiful <laughs> to watch. It was absolutely phenomenal. Y- you seen a hot knife through butter then, yeah. <laughs> it's Pacey, I'll just say yeah. that. So, number 14. This See. is where it's going to get interesting. So, I've uh, I- I've chosen George North. I went for Cheslin Kobe with a close second. George North? George North. Okay, so I I put him in because three cops, British and Irish Lions, in the world team of the decade, a three-time Six Nations uh, winner. Two-time Grand Slam winner and two-time Triple Crown winner. No, like that is impressive. Like that is a good. I'd be, I'd be fat. Can, can I change? Can I, can I was gonna say you might I have change? to. Like I don't get me wrong. Colby's won the the World Cup. Yeah. Like, but if the World Rugby Association are putting George North in as the team of the decade, like mm-hmm. that's enough for me. And that that scene with him against there's two main scenes that he's phenomenal. But like, I mean, 
a try against Australia for British national Islands. Yep. And then also <laughs> later on, I think it was I think it was gonna be like four forty eight years later. Same thing against Australia. Absolutely like ended Israel Fly's career. Like yep. just fireman carried him and just dumped him on his back end. Like it was oh fucking class to watch. Floy looked like he was the one being tackled. Floy looked like he Floy looked like he it didn't even have the ball and he looked like he was being tackled. Keep it in was, mind, he's not a class. light man. Oh no, is. Floy, I I think I read somewhere Floy is like ninety six kilos or something like that and he's like five foot five foot eleven, possibly six foot. So what's that? He's a hundred and five plus the ninety. Yeah, that's two hundred running a, forward. He did it for about five ten meters. That's maybe. a big. It's a big collision. Like I don't want to be at the end of it. Yeah. So who have you chosen? You've chosen Colby, yeah. Colby, right. Well, I might need to change my mind about that. Yeah. But yeah, I I reckon Colby's a definite second choice. But the reason why I went for it wasn't just because <coughs> I mean he's good technical. Yeah. And all that passing, kicking, well. Maybe not kicking for post, but yep. kicking over people, mm-hmm. running after the ball. But he's just got pure pace. Yeah. It's like in football almost. You go for pure pace down the way. Yeah. I was going to say, you get the likes of Gareth Bale or Mohamed yeah. Salah running at you like you're done for. But that's that's purely the only reason why I went for him. The, just for the step? Just for the step. I mean, to be fair, like the step. The Kobe step. The step against Owen Farrell. Oh, just, just look him up. Ended that man's career. Old Farrell hasn't been the same since. His yeah. ankles still been broken. That's so true. we are approaching the end here. But we have certainly left a few of the best to last. So We've got the same picks. Have we actually? Yeah, we got oh, the we same have. Picks. This, this for is the, good. For the last three as well. For the last three, we just, our knowledge is yeah. on parallel. Right, so we have both chosen... As are 12, 13 and 15, mm-hmm. we have both chosen Manamu, Brian O'Driscoll yep. and Ben Smith. Now, I reckon we start off with, Brian, or with Manamu, working the Brian, finishing Ben. Mm-hmm. That's, uh, no. that's how we crack into it. So, Manamu, <laughs> he needs no introduction. Yeah. Like Six foot and 108 kilos. Like, he's a very scary guy to be running mm-hmm. at you. Like, you you see him coming at you, you're scared. Like you would be scared. And with he's played all over the place actually. He got sixty one caps in Wellington, a hundred and twenty six caps for the Hurricanes. Blues, he got thirty nine caps for the Highlanders, he's got nine, and then he finished off his career in Toulon. Ninety three. Ninety three caps. And then for internationally it's hundred and three as well. It's pretty impressive. It is a pretty impressive start. Now don't get me wrong, again, not a lot of honours. Mm-hmm. But he won the World Cup in New Zealand and he also scored a try in that final. Yep. And he also got uh, the Order of New Zealand again in 2019. So, he is pretty impressive. No, I don't know if it's what New Zealand which made him so good. Or yeah. do you think it's just he was... I think he was, I think he was just... I the think physical he was, presence yeah, of the him. The physical just presence, there. the running, tackling, defending. Let's not forget his offloads. There's a cracking, oh, yes. there's a cracking video on YouTube. And... He gets the ball and he literally just pings it out the back mm-hmm. and it is a phenomenal video. It is top class, honestly. Like, so number number thirteen, Brian O'Driscoll. Brian O'Driscoll, a man. Me. The man needs no no introduction really. Irish, which is a good for yeah. us. Mm-hmm. Five foot ten, only ninety three yeah. kilos. Yeah. I thought he'd be a bit heavier than that. Mm-hmm. But uh, 186 club caps for, or for uh, Leinster, 133 for Ireland. British National Lands caps, he has eight of them. Pretty impressive, huh? Uh, just by that alone, yeah. pretty impressive resume. I know, I know we get into his honours. Yeah. Like, there's more than Dan Carter here. Possibly, yes. We've got, where's the, where's the main ones? We've got the World Rugby Men's 15 team of the decade. He's in the team of the decade. Like he must be good. Mm-hmm. Six Nations all-time top score. Six Nations player of the tournament. 06, 07 and 09. Like back to back, best player of the tournament. Like that is so impressive, yeah. especially for an Irish guy as well. Like, oh, it's hard to look past them as being the good as well. It's him and Carter for me. Like, don't get it's well, uh, of the two positions of the two positions in the back. Dark Carter. 
Brian O'Jeskill, but up front, Richie McCall all day long. Yeah. We've also Has got uh, the IRB International Player of the Year, 2001-2 and 09 as well. We've got the World Rugby Magazine Player of the Year, or the Decade, sorry, my apologies, Decade. World Rugby Magazine uh, Team of the Tournament as well. And then also, oh, back in the day, I didn't realise that, IRB Under-19 World Championship, 1998, so... That is back in the day. Consistency, that's what I say. So, that's why for me, and for Evan as well, he mm-hmm. is our number 13. Um, say, for example, you mentioned earlier on as we... Dummy pass to his teammate. Oh, the dummy pass. The dummy yeah. pass. Like, literally, two players cross down, just chucks over his head and runs on, and he nearly scored. See if he scored. Best best try. It, one of. Definitely, one of. definitely yeah. one of. Well, one of the single. Be- yes, the singular best yeah. tries, I was going to say. Cause realistically, you can't beat that try by Garth yeah. Edwards from the Barbarians. Like, that's mm-hmm. just oof, different, different gravy. So, number 15. We have both again chosen the same player. Yep. Ben Smith, a very uh, I would say he's overshadowed. Yes, I was gonna say, I was gonna say well, a very overlooked player. Yeah. I think that what he has done for New Zealand, mm-hmm. unparalleled. Don't get me wrong, a few good contenders. Obviously, mm-hmm. you've got Israel Dag. Back in the day, he was yeah. oh he was up there like. Bowden Bard as well. Yeah. I'd rather play him at 10, but at 15, mm-hmm. he was good. Jordy Bard as well, the two Bard brothers. Yeah. I reckon give Jordy Bard a few more years, he'll definitely be coming for what Ben about, Smith. What about Mackenzie? d Oh, I don't know. I, don't get me wrong, d phenomenal player. Mm-hmm. I'd love to see him at 10, though. I'd love to see him at 10. Put, put Richie Mwanga out to 12 for a game, put him at 10 and see how they get on. I'd love I'd love to see that happen. So just a few of the honours that Ben Smith has as well. Quite quite a lot. So Ben Smith, he is six foot one, ninety-three kilos, and has hundred and fifty-four club caps. And a wee bit surprised by this, only eighty-four international caps. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, you're talking about the time when New Zealand have so much talent. Mm-hmm. That even to get those eighty four caps, pretty is impressive. Still, still. yeah, pretty impressive. And don't forget as well, he was out for a very long time with like yeah. concussions and everything. Because he came, he's it didn't that didn't change the player who he was. Yeah, yeah. He came back just as strong. And keeping in mind, probably New Zealand backline is one of the hardest to, to control. Get into. Yeah, oh, their back, like, their back, their backline in twenty fifteen, Arn Smith, Dan Carter. And then I'm pretty sure it was either Julian Savea playing either eleven or fourteen. Mm-hmm. Julian Savea, let me get like let me like he is a very hard man to tackle. He is nicknamed the boss. Like the 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 clip of him running through the French three. team. Yeah. He must have taken another like, three or four French guys. And like they're not small guys. Mm-hmm. They were all over six foot like he put he, oil on his legs. He, he, like, he put he, people were talking about him. see if he didn't get that injury. Yeah. People were saying he's gonna be the next Jonah Lomu and I can totally understand why yeah. I understand why. Like he no, was if, a, we, if we were going bigger span here. Oh bigger jo- span of jo- all time, Jonah Lomu there. Yeah. <laughs> Jonah Lomu was in that list. Like he was possibly the first name you put in that list mm-hmm. easily. Uh easily done. Like so just a few of the a few of the honours that Ben Smith has. We've got the rugby championship winner, won that six times, Bledisloe Cup winner, nine times. Uh, Freedom Cup winner nine times and also he was in the series of the British and Irish Lions was in that series there as well yep. he was nominated for World Player of the Year in 2013 he was in the World Team of the Year for the New Zealand for five years or for sorry, six years and he back to back uh, oh yeah no yeah. 2012 to 2017 all back to back can completely Jeez, understand yeah. why and he was in the Laureus Team of the Year 2016 so a pretty a pretty impressive a pretty impressive team yeah. we've uh, we've both put together like now imagine say for example we played schoolboy rugby yeah imagine coming up against that team what would you do I don't know I'd love to give I'd love to give uh, like the likes of Richie McCaw a, a, a tackle I'd love to try yeah. I'd, even if I got injured or something like that I'd love to try even if you broke your arm for about oh, three months, it'd be, to- be, to- be worth it. Be totally worth it, yeah. yeah. Be totally worth it. 
But uh, yeah, we've I think we've both picked really good teams. Yeah. I think that if they all played together, it would be it would be interesting to see who gets on. Yeah, who because don't forget you've got all the chemistry and everything as well. You'd have to like know each other. And obviously, a lot of New Zealand guys then they can back each other up. But uh, no, I'm I'm pretty impressed yeah. with our choices there. So. Same. Uh, thank you very much for watching and tuning in. I yeah. think the next time I'm thinking of making a wee series about this, so possibly the next time you'll see me and possibly Evan is either if we do football or snooker, we're gonna look mm. at the different goats of the sport, the greatest of all time, Ronnie O'Sullivan and Ronaldo. Sorry, gotta be back up, gotta back be. up. But uh, yes, we'll possibly have a few others who yep. won't agree with that and we'll have to get their opinions uh, get their opinions and we'll have to educate them on yep. what is right <laughs> so uh, thank you very much for watching and come back next time to see the football version of this so thank yep. you very much